yes, then just write hashtag yes in the comments down below. All right. So let's just add the group by a trusted friend group by to this workflow here. In this video, we will discuss the first of three more or less data types that you deal with a lot in NIME as a procurement pro. And we start with numbers. So in the last lesson, we finalized our payment terms workflow and you can be pretty proud of yourself, by the way. In this and the next few videos, we shine a light on amazing data types and what you can do with them. Numbers are super versatile as the first one and of course, everywhere. But let me show you four ways how to deal with them in NIME that you may use day in, day out. By the way, there is an important question I'd like you to answer at the end of this video. Let's fire up NIME and have a look at the examples. All right, now let's start creating with the blank new workflow. And all I have done here so far is I imported our base file that you already know from the last chapter. You see our enriched base file with a thousand rows and with our enriched PMT long column here. So we could also see it from here. You see there we have it. And the first note I want to show you is one that you already know, and that's the math formula. In the last video, we used the math formula to calculate our cash flow impact, and this time we just use it for another very basic procurement use case for exchange rate conversion. So let's just look at the math formula in the node repository, add it to our workflow. And let's just assume we got data from a European ERP system, but want to convert it to US dollars with an assumed exchange rate of one euro being $1.13 US dollars. So let's label this one. Let's say convert PO value um, to US dollars ex exchange rate 1.13. All right. I mean, the math here is pretty simple, right? It's just PO value times 1.13. But in this case, we want to replace the PO value column. We just want to override it. If you want to keep the original values, you might want to do here a pant column and then PO value dollars or something like this. But for our case, um, let's just uh, stick with what we have done here. So click OK, F7 and execute. And now we see that it is multiplied with 113, as you can see from here to here, 4,829 in the first row becomes 6,586 something. All right, that was the first note I wanted to show you where you can do math. And obviously you might have expected that that's that an obvious note for dealing with number data types. The next one is one that you also already know, and that's the group by. Let's assume a very classical use case. We want to have the PVO by vendor. Do you already know how to do it? Yes, then just write hashtag yes in the comments down below. All right, so let's just add the group by a trusted friend group by to this workflow here. We label it and what do we call it? Group PO value by vendor. And for the people that really don't get it, let's call explain what it is. That's vendor PBO. All right. I guess you know what you need to do. You double click vendor here because that is the grouping column on which we want to act. And what field do we want to group? Of course, it is our recently changed PO value. But we don't want the mean, we want the sum of it. We keep the original names. Okay, and now we have a list of our top vendors here or of all our vendors with their summed up or totaled PVO. All right, that so far might have been my friends still a lesson that you could have done easily yourself. 
With the next one, I'm going to introduce a new node to you, and that is the rank node. All right. So let's add the rank node. You find it under manipulation, row, transform, rank. Let's add the rank node to this workflow. We label it rank. Well, what, what do we want to rank? Can you guess it? Vendor, of course, by PVO. All right. This one is comparably simple or as simple as the sorter node that we have touched upon. So we want to add a ranking attribute column here and it is a PO value and we saw have a rank order. And what it basically does, it adds another, um, another um, column with the rank number in it. So you wanna see it? Quite easy, just click OK, execute and see we have a rank from one to three, four, five, and so on here. And along the way, our um, table is already sorted from smallest to, uh, from biggest, uh, from largest to smallest. You see? All right. And the last thing that we want to do is, let's assume we have two procurement divisions, departments, groups, whatsoever. We have a more operational procurement department and we have us as strategic buyers. We as strategic buyers probably want to focus on priority one vendors where the operational guys might want to focus on priority two vendors. But how do you know that? Make it easy for them. We just use the rule engine, the one that we already know, but this time we use it with numbers because that is a numbers lesson here. So let's collect here. So boom, here we are, we label it. And we call it label vendors with a priority based on rank. Boom. Let's open this up. So once again, we have this help function here that always, always, always shows us how to write such a formula. And what we want to do is we want to say if rank is less than or equal to five in this case we don't need any quotation marks or anything because we're dealing with numbers here then we want to write priority one vendor into our new column called vendor priority isn't that funny we write priority one vendor into vendor priority you get it all right and else every Thing else would go into will have the label priority to vendor in that column so only the top five are our priority one vendors oh see and I made a mistake here of course it needs to be this little arrow consisting of an equals and a greater than sign so let's click OK let's execute I didn't execute before I showed it. What a pity. And now you can see priority one vendor for our top five vendors and priority two vendor for everything below. Another thing that we could do for this vendor prioritization would be we could take the PVOs and say everything that is, let's say, um, above 350 is priority one and everything below would be priority two. So classical PVO threshold, also very common in procurement. You see, another very typical showcase in the world of procurement, ranking vendors. This is just another task you can automate as of now. Of course, you could have done this with Excel as well. But in the advanced module of this course, I show you a way how to automate the automation under Windows so 9 and the workflow runs automatically. If you don't want to miss out this neat trick, make sure to hit like and subscribe. Now a question to you guys. Do you want more of these smaller workflows, like one workflow per lesson and a new little task with every lesson? Or should we continue to build longer workflows with explanations over the course of several lessons? Let me know in the comments down below. And in the next lesson, we're going to cover texts and what awesome stuff we can do with them. See you then. So let's fire up name. All right, so in this uh, video, we're going to create, nah, forget. This time we're going to use 
the mod formula. No, we didn't use it to, ah, scrap that. This is a, so if you don't want to, if you want to go to the first part of this online course, click this video. And here is just another video that shows you some very funny stuff you can do with Nime. Oh, and if you want to download the resources and chat with fellow students, just go here to this page over at procurementzen.com.